Hi, everyone. Uh, excited to be here. Uh, cool. Um, so uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of a startup called Meltdown AI. We are based in like Palo Alto. Um, and what we're doing is you're trying to build this like new generation of agents that can go do things for you. So how and like how can we go and build this new modality that can like enable you to interact with the digital world in like really really new ways. And uh, so let me show you how this works. So this is an example of our technology where we actually had it go book a flight fully autonomously end to end. And how our technology works is we can go from language to actions. So if we give it like a prompt, can you go and book me a one way flight from SFO to New York? Our AI can actually control your computer and can like uh, end to end go and take actions for you fully autonomously without any human intervention. And uh, this is really powerful because uh, this frees up so much time and productivity for you that uh, you don't have enough to like uh, go do things yourself. You don't have to click and type. And so we believe like LMs are the are the present. So this is like something that you can use today. But agents are the future, and that's what everyone will be using like five years from now. Um, and we think like this will become the building block for society. So like how you have like the iPhones or how you have like the internet, like that changed like how you interact with the technology. We feel like the same thing will happen with agents. When 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 agents become like a mass uh, experience, like this becomes like something that anyone can use. I think that's going to be like really game changing because that's been the future everyone has been thinking about. Like, if you have seen the movie Her or have you seen like uh, similar Jarvis, and we're very excited to like sort of like enable this and be in the frontier. And we've been thinking about a lot about like how can you make this safe? How do you prevent uh, this sort of agents from going wrong and like uh, not uh, doing like random things? Like you don't want an agent that goes like spends all your money or empties your bank account. But how do you make sure that it stays online and is doing the right things you want and enabling the human potential? And this is what we're doing as a company. So what we're trying to do is build this uh, kind of agents that are safe and secure and uh, working on your behalf to enable you to be more productive and free up your time. And so our agents are, are able to control the computer to do the things. I might have to actually skip the slide, unfortunately. Um, but I will talk about like, the details of technically how it's working. And uh, so when we think about like the agents, kind of like what we are building, um, there are a lot of different components. So the one big one is like memory. It's like, like can it remember things about you? So can it know have like a short-term memory? Does it like understand the history? Like how your chat GPT has a history, but does it also have like a long-term memory? Like does it like know your preferences? Like does it know like what I did? Like maybe like uh, if I use the AI maybe like last uh, month to book a flight, does it remember like okay, like you booked this flight and maybe like save my past preferences, save my past orders? Can it remember my like uh, allergies? So like it doesn't like if I ask you to order food, it doesn't like go and order me something uh, that that uh, might be harmful, and and so like building this like sort of like a user long term memory, we think that is something that you really need for an agent to be useful because if you have to go and tell it everything, then what's the point? Similarly, you really want like really complex and useful planning, where like the agent can make a plan, it can like uh, correct itself, and can also like take a task, break it down. So if I say, can you go and book me a seven day trip to Italy? We want it to like sort of like decompose that and like be like able to like go book the flights, find the places to visit, find the hotels, and like sort of combine them together and do the whole thing autonom autonomously. And um, other than that, we also wanted to be able to use tools, like be able to like use calculator, maybe write code, maybe like do an internet search, so on, and finally combine that with actions so that it actually like act on your behalf and do useful things. Um, so this is what we've been building um, at like Maltown. Um, the name actually uh, comes from like uh, it's inspired from quantum physics actually. So how you have different physical like uh, quantum particles like neutron, muon, fermion. Uh, it's like sort of like a hypothetical particle, multion. Um, and what we're trying to build is like this agent that is uh, has read-write access and can allow us to like work on multiple things at the same time. So it's in a sense like unlock uh, more like parallelization for us, where we don't have to go and like do everything ourselves. The agents can go and do it for us. Um, we have been able to do like very complex things already with uh, these agents. So this is like one demo we did last year where we actually had an agent go and pass an uh, online driving test in California. So we actually had to take the live, uh, like a real driving test online on the computer where it uh, took all this like uh, 40 plus questions of the quiz and was able to like pass all of them autonomously without any human intervention. This was actually a live attempt where uh, the AI was controlling the computer. The DMV actually didn't know about it. So the DMV thought like this is like an actual human who was doing this like exam. And uh, they actually sent us like a driving lessons at the end. 
So I hate all the details of the lessons, but like uh, uh, the funny thing was like because uh, the DMV thought it's an actual human, they thought like okay, like uh, uh, like this is, like a successful attempt, and they actually sent us like a full like a uh, approval. Uh, and so as you can ima imagine like there's like a lot of this kind of things that are possible. Okay, so I think I showed this already. And so when it comes to this kind of agents, we like to think of them in different levels. So we think of them inspired from self-driving cars as level zero to level five. So anything be below level two uh, comes under human control, where the human is in a sense like controlling the machine and like taking actions. Anything above level three is like more like autonomous mode, where like the machine is operating itself, and the human is there to ensure safety, reliability. And uh, um, what we are trying to build is the systems which are like very autonomous, like have almost zero hum human intervention. So we like to call them as like L5 systems. This is this are similar to like if you have driven a Waymo or like if you have sitting in a Waymo in SF. So that's an L5 system. Whereas if you have said like so sort of like a, use the self-driving car feature in a Tesla, uh, that's like an L4 system where like you are present in the car and then you can overtake it. And so like you have a human as a safety mechanism. And so we're very very excited to build this like uh, systems which are between like L4 and L5. So it might require some human intervention when it comes to say like payments. Like if you are using to book a flight, it might want you you might want a confirmation. But otherwise, it, for most things, it can just go and like do it on your behalf if you trust it enough. Cool. Um, so when it comes to this kind of building these agents, there's like two different routes. So one is APIs. So if this agent can go and automate APIs, then that's one way where we can like build powerful agents. The second way is more direct interaction, where can the agent go and control your computer, can control your browser. And both have like different pros and cons. So for APIs, it's uh, easy to build context. Either it's, it's also more controllable. But there's like uh, millions of APIs, so it's very hard to like uh, understand all of them, make it like uh, work all the time, and APIs keep changing. Uh, there's been a past attempts to use APIs, like ChatGPT tried this thing with the uh, like OpenAI tried this with ChatGPT plugins, um, but they were not able to like get it fully uh, work at the time. Similarly, I think there's a lot of different attempts going on where people are using APIs as a route. What we have been doing instead with our technology is, uh, can we actually go? control computers like a human will. So can we click and type? Can we do more like a high level UI interaction? And the nice thing is like this is easy because it's like once you understand how to control an interface, you can control any interface. Um, but it's, it's hard to get guaranteed reliability. And that's the question that we're trying to solve. And, and this is like some things we've been building where we have like a, like a agent API where you can just like tell the agent over national language, okay, like uh, can you go and do this for me? and then interact with the computer and do it. And so we see this could become like a universal API uh, that, that can go and like abstract away the, the need for like any sort of like different like uh, API interactions. So if you have a platform like Zapier, which is connecting with like a lot of different APIs internally, we can just have our agents, you just give them a natural language and they'll just go and like control the interface. So you don't really need uh, to use low level APIs. That's what we're building. Um, and there's uh, something that you can actually go out and play with today. So we unveiled this uh, playground. Uh, this was like uh, uh, last week, where you can actually go to this like online web platform without having to download anything, and then you can go on and, uh, and like use our technology to control a browser running in the cloud. So you can actually talk to it, and you can tell it like, okay, can you find me this tweet from Elon Musk, or can you go and like uh, buy me this book on Amazon? And you can actually see it taking actions live and like actually controlling the computer, doing the whole thing, end to end, and then. Uh, and, and then sort of like even like asking questions, almost like becoming like an assistant in that sense. Cool. Um, and so to get into the bulk of this, like uh, how we think about like the current models is like models are sort of like the compute that are powering this operations. But what we want to do here is like, can we go and build more things? So can we loop in more logic on top of, uh, like can we loop in more layers uh, on top of this, like just like the core compute? So can we have memory? Can we have sketchpads? Can we have like more uh, intelligent learnings? And uh, so this is like one concept we like to uh, use. This is borrowed from like Andre Karpathy. Um, that you can think about the LLM as a compute unit, like a CPU, that's powering the operations. But then you need something like a memory, which is the disk in this case. You might need like other tools. You might need uh, other peripherals, uh, like video and audio as modalities. You might also want like a browser or like an ethernet so you can actually interact with the web and you might want to control other LLMs. And so this kind of becomes like designing a new computer from scratch, and how do you enable that uh, and make it like work all the time? Cool, um, 
So I'll just go over some parts of this where um, if you think about like memory, you want to think about this similar to a disk, uh, which is long-lived long and persistent. And how we do this today is using embeddings and like retrieval models. But there's still like a lot of open questions about like how do you make this work all the time? How do you scale to like say trillions of uh, data points? How do you encode hierarchy? How do you encode temporal uh, coherence and so on? Um, there's also like a lot of open questions here about like agent to agent communication. Like why and how can we build like multi-agent systems that can talk to each other coordinate and like uh, enable more benefits such as parallelization as well as like uh, specialization of different tasks. And there's still a, open, a lot of open challenges left here. A lot of them are related to like agent to agent communication where like how can we build primitives where these agents can go and coordinate with each other. Um, and there's like, this is like similar to maybe like thinking about like human organizations where you might want like uh, agents organized in like different like uh, levels of hierarchy where they can like say interact with each other or they have managers and they have like maybe managers or managers and so on. And, and it's very interesting to think about like, okay, like how will this work? And uh, this is something that we're excited to also build. So there's like a lot of things we're doing in this area, especially when it comes to like agent, -agent communication and multi-agent systems. Um, we did some demos here where we were able to actually um, have uh, agents that are running in Powell. So it's like you can give it like say like uh, you give a CSV of a, of a name of names of people, um, and say like okay like can you go and find the LinkedIn profiles of all these people in this list, which might be and then send like a LinkedIn connect request, and then you can imagine like uh, if it were, if it was a single agent, it would take a lot of time because you have to go sequentially one by one, but if you can just create like as many agents as you want, so you can have hundreds of thousands of agents, then each agent can go to this task and then combine that together, and so we see this there's a lot of benefits of parallelization that you can unlock. And this is what we are building towards. Okay, um, so towards the end of the talk, I will say there's a lot of future directions uh, that we are thinking about when it comes to agents right now. The, the first one I will say is reliability. How do you make this more reliable? How do you have better planning? How do you prevent like, agents from looping, making mistakes? Um, and how do you like, deploy this in the real world? How do you build the right models for observability? How do you build trust? How do you build in human overrides? And one thing we've seen like with the maybe the earlier prototypes, if, if anyone has tried AutoGPT here, that uh, it's very hard to make agents follow rules. So they will go and like start doing random things. You will have like, some people like you would like expect it to do something ideally, but will make a mistake and keep on over repeating the mistakes. And this is like the biggest uh, issue that uh, I think like is preventing agents from becoming like something that you can use right now. And this is like uh, technically like uh, the biggest challenge that we right now too. Cool. And uh, to end the talk, uh, uh, this is like how we like to think about agents. Where like uh, uh, we'd like to think this could be like almost like a like a new sort of computer. Like a, we call like to call it like a neural computer, uh, where you have like a chat interface where the user is interacting with the chat. You have like a task engine that takes taking actions behind the scene, which has like a bunch of rules that uh, it's supposed to follow. And then based on the task, we can route it to different like places. So we can route it to like the internet. We can route it to like different applications, or we can route it to like a local uh, memory. And then like uh, use this to build like a really like interesting uh, logic which can solve any sort of like uh, complex task and take actions for you. Uh, cool. Um, and so I would like to end the talk here. But uh, thanks to you all for listening. <laughs>